Well, hello. Welcome to the show. Suzanne Lynn here with a very special author. His name is Rolando Hyman. Rolando, I'm glad that you're here today. I'm excited to be here, Susan, and thanks for having me. Absolutely. We're here to talk about his book called Giving Myself Permission to Grow, Seven Solutions for Personal Development. Uh, Rolando uh, is a psychotherapist. He works full-time providing support for individuals and families who struggle with things like anxiety, depression, uh, mental health, and addictions. Um, in his spare time, I have heard the word on the street is that he likes to dance to Baby Shark and uh, play soccer with his kids. So I'm glad that you're here. And it's nice to know those fun little things about you too, Rolando. Yes, it's great to be here, Susan. And I, I'm really um, excited to share um, with, with, with the listeners the work that, that we're doing. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about your book, Giving Myself Permission to Grow, Seven Solutions for Personal Development. What's the overall message of your book, Rolando? The overall message of the book, uh, Susan, is to help persons to understand that instead of being stuck in the problem mindset, I try to write the book to help persons to get out of the problem mindset to a solution mindset. And so the idea that's been purported in the book is to help persons to recognize that there's actually ways for you to grow if you look through a different lens. What kind of lens should they be looking at? Is it a spiritual lens? Is it just a new way of seeing a problem? You know, it's it's a combination of all spiritual lens, uh, psychological lens, emotional lens. It's really taking hold of the things that you can do, practical things actually. Okay, that you can do that's going to help you to overcome your issues, your barriers, and grow. The idea behind it is growing. You know, when we're depressed, when we're when we're struggling, when we're stuck in anger, we can't move past solutions. We need help. I mean, you just get so caught up, you can't take the next step because you stay stuck. What are some practical things that we can do? Um, I know that you talk about the seven solutions for personal development. What are some of those that we can uh, apply to our lives? You know, and, and one other thing, when you read the book, for example, we talk about things like per, being persistent and what, how do you do that? We talk about things like being very deliberate with self-care and, and how do you do that? We talk about things like of letting go of, of barriers, you know, how do you overcome barriers and how do you grow from trauma and grief mm -hmm. and set goals for yourself? And so the idea that's being um, purported in the book is pinpointed some practical ways that you can grow and overcome your issues. Well, I imagine what happens when we get stuck in these issues, we start to neglect ourselves and self-care gets put on the back burner. Yeah, yes, oftentimes it does. And, you know, most of us are guilty, most of us as professionals, because we pride ourselves in um, being good at what we do for work, for example, right. you know, we, we, we get awards, we, we, we boast, we walk around feeling good about it, but we miss how to apply that to our personal lives. So we're, hmm. we're flourishing in our careers, but on the inside, we're struggling, we're burnt out. So taking the time now to evaluate, which is one of the things that I mentioned in the book, will get us into a better place where we're grounded, where we're balanced, where we're more effective as we serve the community. You know, Rolanda, one of the things that struck me with your book is that life doesn't have to happen to us. Like we have control by choices that we make. Yes. And you know, uh, one, one of the greatest gifts that you have um, Susan and that I have is the gift of choice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oftentimes we don't recognize that. And so we have to capture how do I use choice to my advantage versus a disadvantage. And it's so often we don't realize that every decision that we make, every choice that we make, it has an impact. Right. So we want to pause and evaluate and think before we act versus acting before we think. Hmm. You know, I'd love to know the heart behind why you wrote this. I mean, as a psychotherapist, are you just seeing people making the same mistakes and just saying, gosh, there are some principles that would really help as a foundational place for people to start? 
because you can't see everybody in the world at your practice, right? <laughs> That's correct. You know, you know, you know, Susan, what's powerful is um, in my own practice, I've come to recognize that sometimes the root cause of many issues is that people feel like there is a problem, something is not right, something needs to change. And so the idea came to me as I sat and I'm thinking problem, problem, why are we always thinking problem? And so it's from that same Hmm. mentality, I formulated this map, okay? And that map is also in my book. I formulated this map and I think, how do I push or influence rather my clients to come out of this problem circle and use it to their advantage. Mm. And so and so, um, I built the idea, instead of seeing a problem, seeing persistence as a way out. Or instead of seeing a problem, seeing opening up as a way out. Instead of seeing a problem, seeing um, resting and, and, and self-care as a way out. Instead of mm. seeing a problem, seek to address um, psychological barriers and bring some balance. And in in the book, I talk about those four pillars that sometimes we need to pay attention to psychological, emotional, spiritual, and social balance so that we can be effective. And a big piece that I mentioned in it is the idea of maintenance. You know, we, we, we are willing to take our cars to get it serviced. We're willing to, um, um, do renos on our houses. We're willing to do all these things to to be um, quote unquote happy, but we're not taking the time to work on maintenance of personal, person of our personal well being, and that is something that I'm purporting in the book. So perhaps it's pride that's keeping people from going to get help. Where you say humility is a great place to be because you can get help. You know, you know, Susan, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, the thing that wowed me as I was, I was writing this book and doing research, um, research has um, uh, alluded to something that is called intellectual humility. Hmm. Now, intellectual humility, believe it or not, is said to be the, the, that process whereby we sit and ask ourselves, could it be that all the things that I've been taught or all the things that I've been doing are flawed. So then if they are, what do I do with that? Right. Oh, that's a big question. You know, and and, and you know, Susan, the book is also going to be accompanied with a workbook. I've also created a workbook. So each chapter that you read, you can sit and you can reflect and you can you 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 can set some goals for yourself by using the workbook to help you to grow. Wow. Well, unfortunately, the time is going by so fast. What are some parting words that you would like to leave with your listeners and viewers? You know, one of the exciting and the parting words I'd like to leave is just remember this, that the the, the path, persistent is the path that leads to dreams being fulfilled. Okay? And so if you, if if there's something going on and you're thinking in your mind now, um, this is too much. I, I, I've got to, I, I, I can't make it. Just remember that each time you walk into your room and you flick the switch to turn the light on, it's because one guy was persistent and stuck to it. That's why wow. we're enjoying the luxuries of the light bulb today. I love it. It can become a great change as well. Rolanda, we are out of time. Rolando Hyman wrote, giving myself permission to grow seven solutions for personal development. We've got the website right on the screen where you can purchase that book. Thank you, Rolanda. Have a great day. 